Jumper's Easy Book Air is an 11.6 inch notebook. It has a Atom X5 Z8300, a super common chipset, but what isn't common to see is wireless AC and a 128 gigabyte eMMC for storage. So it weighs only 930 grams, super light, and the front of it is only 7 millimeters thick and the rear 14 millimeters. So very thin and very portable. Let's have a look at it in greater detail. So on the bottom of the device we do not have any speaker grills, it's just four rubber feet and it is made out of alloy the bottom. So the top of it has an alloy lid, pushing down quite hard there, there's a bit of flex to it there. Now this is where Jumper took things a little too far in copying Apple. All we have is a USB type C port. Now this is USB 3.0, it is not 3.1 so it does not support display out. There is no micro SD card slot no HDMI out and a full size USB port would have been really good to have on this. So I think they've made a very poor design choice just going with the one port here. So on the left hand side we do at least have a 3.5mm headphone jack and it does support microphone inputs. It's good to see they didn't copy Apple 100% and remove the audio jack. At least we do have that. The EasyBook Air cannot be opened with one hand, you need two hands to open it and that is the maximum the screen will recline. So let's have a quick look at the screen. Jumper has selected a very nice IPS 1080p panel. The maximum brightness isn't the greatest, it's only around 300 lumens of brightness. But indoors it's perfectly fine. Now it's a glossy display so it's very susceptible to reflections and glare. And doesn't look too good outdoors in sunlight, it's barely legible. But it has good blacks, nice contrast, good colors. And I haven't detected or seen any screen bleed at all too. So a very all-rounded IPS display they have selected here. Now the typing experience on the keyboard is actually a lot better than I would have expected at this price range. It offers a good travel of about 1.3 millimeters. They are 15 millimeter keys spaced out quite nicely. One complaint I do have is the power key doesn't have any more resistance to it than the rest of the keys on the keyboard. You'll also find your typical function keys, you've got print screen on there, but what is missing is page up and down. You also have controls there to control the volume and screen brightness, you're typical there. Now the touchpad on it is a reasonably good size, it has a plastic textured feel to it, and it doesn't support any gestures apart from double tap right click is the only one I have discovered. So weighing only 930 grams this thing is very portable very light it's very easy just to pick it up and place it in a backpack and off you go. So here is a sample shot on the front facing camera now it can only record in 480p maximum at least it does record in 30 frames per second but as you can see the quality and the resolution really isn't up to 2016 standards. Now the microphone quality on the ha other hand is surprisingly good until you start to type on the keyboard due to its location. I'll show you what I mean so you can hear it. So if I'm typing away in voice chat, that's what the receiving end is going to hear which is quite distracting and not good at all. Now the audio output from the 3.5mm headphone jack is surprisingly clear and good, there's no static or interference and it's quite loud as well so you can drive a very large headset with no problems. Let's have a listen to the speakers, now there are no speaker grills anywhere, the speakers just resonate through the housing. At 100% volume there is some distortion which you'll probably hear. So those actually don't sound too bad, there's even a little bit of bass in there, but at 100% there's a slight crackle, slight distortion, those speakers just can't handle 100% volume, but if you tweak it back to around 80, it sounds quite good for a cheap Chinese notebook. So it ships out with Windows 10 Home, and we have 4GB of RAM, now the RAM speed is running at 1600MHz, which is the fastest 
the Atom X5 Z8000 chipset supports. Windows 10 also activated as soon as it was connected up to the internet. And performance overall feels about as fast as the Jumper EasyBook 2, which is perhaps one of the fastest Z8300 devices I have tested, and trust me, I have tested quite a lot of this chipset. Probably too many devices, I'd say, to be honest. So I'm going to run through some benchmarks. This is CloudGate 1.1. Now this scores are not bad for the chipset. Here is a PC Mark score, PC Mark 7. 3D Mark Ice Storm 1.2. And finally, Geekbench 4 score. Now the wireless range and performance seems very good from that Intel Wireless AC 3160 chipset. Definitely faster than the Realtek wireless end devices. And the internal storage. Here are the speeds. You can see that the write speeds aren't the greatest, but the read speeds are good for an eMMC 4.5 spec. And finally, battery life. I found battery life to be quite good. Here I did a test yesterday. So I had the brightness set to 0%, which is still actually quite bright and very usable indoors. And I managed to squeeze out eight hours and eight minutes. Now what I was doing was a, just two or three, four or five tabs. I had open and edge up to five tabs. I did a little bit of YouTube streaming. I was typing in notebook as well. And so light use get about eight hours. Now, if you step that up to a little bit more heavy kind of use, then you get around six and a half to seven hours, which is very good in terms of battery life because it has a 8,000 milliamp hour capacity battery in there. And also to mention the free space you get on first boot and first use of this device is 105 gigabytes. And what is probably one of the worst design choices you'll ever see on a notebook is using just one Type-C port, which means you have to use the included adapter whenever you want to connect up your USB devices. Now I have tested out other hubs. You can get USB Type-C hubs like this one here that will allow you to use more ports, but I could not get it to actually charge the device at the same time. And it does not support HDMI out either. This I tested with my Type-C to HDMI and nothing, this is only a USB 3. The good thing is it will power at least external hard drives and it is running at full USB 3 speeds. So Atoms are not known for their gaming prowess. However, you can get away with playing just some titles on low resolution. So right now I'm running Counter-Strike Global Offensive here, the Dust 2 map, 800 times 600 resolution, lowest possible settings. Let's have a look and see if it has playable frame rates or not. So right now it's around 15, 13 frames per second. This is really just too slow as you can see. Very choppy gameplay. And it is really struggling. League of Legends is at least playable at 720p on the lower settings. Frame rates staying around the higher 30s. Dipping down to about 31. But it's still quick to move around the map. But I have actually seen better. So here's a quick look at the internals. Now why the thermals are so good on this EasyBook Air is because what they have done is a very wise choice. They've used a thermal pad on the rear of the alloy housing and that is transferring all the heat away from the chipset onto the whole rear of the case. And that is basically one very large heat sink. And it does an excellent job keeping those temperatures in check. So here we have the mini PCI card slot with a wireless AC. That's the Intel chipset there we have four chips there, Hynix brand and the Samsung eMMC. So brand components have been used in here, which is good to see. And the battery pack, 8,000 milliamp hours. And here are the left and right speakers. So those speakers actually come up the sound through the keyboard, which probably explains why at 100% volume, we get a little bit of vibration from the sound surrounding components there. So that is my review there, just to sum things up. Okay. Portability was definitely the focus from the Jumper's design team, but I think that design team should be fired for copying Apple so much and running with the ridiculous idea just to only include the one USB Type-C port on there. It's downright stupid if you ask me. At least they could have included a full-sized USB 3 port on there, or even maybe just a micro USB 2 port if size constraints was the problem. 
if it was cost cutting or cost limitations, who knows? But we're also missing out on a micro SD card slot. Micro HDMI output could have been included on there too, which would have made a huge difference. Now the bezels, they are huge, they are ugly, and they do take a while to get used to. Just like the color scheme, I wish they include, included other options, like silver for example would have been nice. Okay, it is very portable, it's ultra portable, it's very light, weighing only 930 grams is great. And the thinness of it, so you can just slip it into a backpack, nice and easy. The battery life is very good, running between 7 and 8 hours. And the performance of the Atom Z8300 just feels a little bit snappier and faster than tablets that run the same chipset. The screen quality as well isn't too bad. And the build quality being mostly alloy is another positive there. So can I recommend it? It all boils down to the fact that do you use USB ports? If you need a USB port, a full-sized one, avoid this machine like the plague. But if you find that you don't use USB ports and you want portability, battery life and a good typing experience above everything else, then maybe this is a machine for you. Thank you so much for watching this review and hopefully I will catch you back in the channel soon.